Uh, we are communicating through our conscious mind. First thing to understand why we use the word conscious mind. I am conscious of you, I am conscious of myself, I am conscious of talking, I am conscious of sitting at my home, it means I am consciousness. Consciousness is everywhere. You remove the consciousness, nothing else exists. So now, is the trick of the consciousness that creates these thoughts, I am conscious of you, me, he, they, event? No, it is by the conscious mind. <laughs> Consciousness independent, no part, no product, no property. Conscious mind. So think of a conscious mind. <coughs> A metaphor. Conscious mind is like a is like a plate. So in that plate, the moment I communicate, I see the word I am is there at at one place in that plate. You are there at a second place in the same mind. And the experience between the two is there at the third point. In the plate we have a couple of recipes and the dishes. <laughs> mind, the conscious mind tricks. Now, once I explain this, the master says there are only two things in the world. I am and I am not. Both is taking place in the mind that creates the world around me. That plate is nothing but only pure consciousness. On that plate that is, there is a superimposition by the conscious mind, I am. And once I have I am, then <coughs> you are also there. So that you is another superimposition. Then relationship between I and you. We, we have a stress between, we have a stress between us, we are happy with us. And after that, there are millions of part and product and properties. This is nothing but the world. The world is perceived by the mind. When there is no mind, there is only pure mind. There is nothing. Plate is there. Plate remains there. You wash it and plate is plate. Then again you bring the plate and you serve the dishes. <laughs> I am and I am not. So I see you, I know you. Go ahead. Now see the relationship. I know mm -hmm. you, you are good, you are bad, you are happy, you are unhappy, you have different traits, you are different age, you are different sex and gender. My goodness, mind, stop this. Don't create so many things. Let me understand. That is the journey of the Eastern wisdom. But, but wo wo world, world around, around exists exist only, only when I am. I am. You are right. And I am is 
one point in the conscious mind. <laughs> so the world is another point in the conscious mind. And the experiences that is taking place, that is also another point in the conscious mind. Come on. <laughs> Whether there is an experience of stress, there is an experience of anxiety and duality and a conflict and the war, everything is happening there. And the plate has neither to enjoy nor to get attached, nor to be identified. You are not washing the plate, you are washing the conscious mind. <laughs> but we, the problem is that we think that we are cleaning ourselves. Why we are, we think like this? Oh, Upanishad teaching, you know, this is, you know, I'm just making it simple and once we go to the learning room. <laughs> When I think that I'm washing, I'm cleaning myself, is the problem. I'm already clean. But why I think so? Because in the conscious mind, there is one point there which claims this is I am. But fact is that I am the real self. Fact is that I am the plate. I am not a particular dish in the plate. So what is the ignorance? Ignorance is, uh, I'm using for the sake of understanding, I am and the real self. I am, mind, real self, independent of the mind. This is what but, I'm but, using. So in ignorance, we claim this, I am and the real self is one. We have to discern, do the viveka, you are free. But, but ignorance, ignorance is, is I, am. I am. Ignorance is I am. So now, now see that. Oh, yes, I think I, I understood that point. When you, ignorance says I am. So now we have to, that is what I, I was teaching in the last session just now. So I will pick up that teaching. When you say ignorance says I am. Wisdom says, wisdom means I am discerning, I am doing a viveka. So in my head, I recognize here is I am and here is the real self. That is wisdom. I am still using I am. But why? No, no, you separate it. Can we separate I am from the from the consciousness, that is why we are saying conscious mind. Mind is a matter, but I'm saying conscious mind. We cannot separate them, but we can see the dis we can see the difference between the two. You cannot separate them, but you can see the difference between the two. How do you see the difference? Physical separation? No. In knowledge separation? Yes. So I continue to use I am, but I'm aware of the real self is already there. One is I am, coming from the mind, and the other I see the presence of the consciousness I am is here, one dish in the plate, and the entire plate is main fact is this. Recognition. We need a cognitive, entire Upanishad, all the Upanishads. I would say the main Upanishads. Main Upanishads means that they are part of the Vedic system, and then when we use the word Vedic system, then we have seven great masters who discover, who reveal these principles and out of the seven masters, their entire lineage, they started and from there, they picked up and uh, uh, collection of those mantras in the teachings is known as the Upanishads. Out of 108 Upanishads, 
we have more than 300 Upanishads. So out of that, 108 Upanishads, we can say 15, 20 Upanishads teaches us that you have to understand. Once you are a seeker, then you have to understand the knowledge. So until you are a seeker, you have to do a lot of practices because I have to become a seeker. But once I am a seeker, then I have to follow Shravanam, listening and learning from the teacher who teaches you from the text. The one who does not teach you from the text, then the conscious mind creates its own, con own concept, oh, quantum physics, quanta. Come on, I want to know my subjective reality. Quantum is objective reality. It can throw some light, some understanding, but it does not mean that it will give me the reality. What is this? It's a plastic, plastic mouse. mouse. It is not mouse, it is light on the mouse. If there is no light, you don't see the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's true. true. Physics. So physics helps us to understand. Now, is light absent when I remove the mouse? No. no. I bring the mouse, the light remains there. Light is independent of the mouse, yes. Light is the part of the mouse, no. Light is the product of the mouse, no. The light always remains. That is what the consciousness and the real self is all <laughs> We miss because of the conscious mind. So conscious mind is a helper and it is a barrier. We cannot get rid of the conscious mind. Uh, I'm going in a general way, so I'll bring a lot understanding uh, the mind and the knower, understanding the mind and the real self. I'm going uh, in a totally different way. Now see in a different, uh, in a continuation of that, that mosquito sits on your shoulder and your hand goes, conscious mind goes, it says gone. That ability, that self-awareness, my friend, is possible only in the human body, not in the body of a mosquito, not in the body of a tiger, not in the body of an elephant. What I'm conveying, what our masters conveys, the human body can only manifest or reflect the conscious mind and a free intellect with a higher level of self-awareness. Not the body of a mosquito, not the body of a lion, not the body of a tiger, not the body of a snake. My goodness. And I'm wasting my life as a human body. It is a, such a greatest gift. I cannot claim that I know I will be born as a human body. If I know it, it means I know before the birth. So existence gifted me with the human body. And I'm not working towards my realization. What a sorry state of affairs. 
Elephant cannot recognize. Tiger cannot recognize. Mosquito cannot recognize. That is why in a, in a very lighter manner, those gods and goddesses can not awaken to their real self, only the human body, because they have an astral body. They don't have the physical. They have a subtle body and a causal body. We have this physical human body that where the conscious mind lives, we have a free intellect to recognize and realize our real self. Forget about any living species out of 8.4 living species. 8.4 million living species, they cannot recognize. Because the reflection of the consciousness is clear. We can have a subjective and the objective reality which is missing in all the animals. <clears throat> When we say the body of a living species, body, human body, physical body is the same, made up of the five elements. Every living species demands protein, carbohydrate, water, oxygen. When we say living species, life. Existence gifted us a human body and we are missing. We are awfully busy. Why? We have a lot of stress. We are suffering. Uh, who recognizes this? Conscious mind. Remember again in the plate. Conscious mind, I am. Second point is the stress. Third point, the problem in the relationship. Fourth point is they are fully busy. Fifth point says I don't have money. <coughs> Six point says I have a lot of money. Seventh, uh, come on. These are the recipes and a plate of the consciousness. I recognize today I am in stress. Tomorrow I recognize now I am happy with you. Third day I recognize that I am unhappy with you. Fourth day I... Uh, so that conscious mind, which has one thought, I thought, is known in ignorance as I am, individual consciousness. When those masters realized they said this real self or the pure consciousness is not the part, product and property of anything. It is all pervading. It is all knowing. It is pure in a sense that it is not a part. It cannot be divided. It is present everywhere. So when I say I am present at my home, it is the conscious mind plus that I thought. Otherwise, it has no meaning at all. And with that, think, contemplate. I did not know that I will be born with the human body. So now we are hitting the same conscious mind. Are you conscious that you have a human body? Yes. So do you see the difference between the level of awareness between the human body and the other living species? Yes. Again, example, the fly sits here. My self-awareness is through it. The fly does not know I'm going to kill. I know it. It is because of the higher self-awareness and the free intellect that has succeeded in controlling COVID virus.
Otherwise, virus is also a living species. The virus do not, they do not have any intention to kill us. They have their own level of growth. We say, oh, please do not kill. I understand that. Why I understand? Because of the human body. With that human body, plus the conscious mind, plus the self-awareness, plus the free intellect. That is not possible with the COVID virus. That is why we say out of 8.4 million species, only we are the one who are self-aware we can, we can raise in self-awareness, we can use the free intellect to find out, find out who we are, how this entire existence is working, what is the world, and then we can think and speak and act out of the real self to be in peace, happiness, love, and wisdom is what awakening and realization. Go a little further. So when I use the word conscious mind, without the human body, not possible, conscious mind. So it means that conscious mind includes the physical, subtle, and causal, all the three. That is why we need to we do the viveka to separate from all the three bodies to find the real self. To clean the plate. <laughs> plate remains as it is. <laughs> so now at a deeper level, deeper understanding, because conscious mind, so I'm talking of the Upanishad, memory, knowledge, past, so it's a part of the causal body. I'm From where I'm speaking, I come from the conscious mind, the subtle body, without the human frame, I cannot say. I cannot communicate. Mosquito and elephant cannot communicate. The knowledge. So here we are saying it's a conscious mind, it's a combination, interaction of all the three bodies. <coughs> and these three bodies are served in a plate that is served in the conscious mind. Conscious mind is different from the plate that is pure consciousness. Uh, just, you know, for the sake of metaphor and simile. It, nothing happens to the plate. Whether you serve in a sticky food or oily food, we know how to clean it. And we live in ignorance. So I was talking in the previous session, the distance and the difference. Is there any distance between the conscious mind, which is known as I am, which is known as individual consciousness, which is known as that I am suffering from the pure consciousness? No. So here we have to differentiate. We have not to follow the plate and that example. So there is no distance. That distance, you cannot you cannot separate them. They are always together. But I can know them, they are different. The moment I know they are different, I'm awakened. I'm already in the state of mindfulness all the time. We know plate is different from the dish that is served on the plate. 100% we know it. But here we make a mistake. In our day-to-day -day living, we make a mistake. What is that mistake? It's an error of perception. What is that error of perception? Wave is different from the water. I know it there. 
Oh, wave is different from the water, yes. Okay, so let the wave search the water. No, let the wave search itself. Who is wave? Where is wave? Wave always only finds water. Wave does not find itself. So in that conscious mind, when you start searching I am, you don't find I am. You land up with the real self. You land up with the pure consciousness. Clay pot. So where is the where is the clay pot? Uh, here is the clay pot. Oh, this is clay. Uh, where I am? Here I am. No, this is your forehead. This is me. No, this is your heart. Where you are. You are pervading everywhere. Conscious mind with an idea of a thought of I am creates a sense of delusion. And that delusion we carry on that delusion. We live in ignorance that causes the suffering, endless suffering. So that is what the world, we create our own world. What is the world? I am not. Who created this? I am. Where is this I am? In the conscious mind. One recipe, I am. Other recipe, I am not, that is the world. But it's, still it is different. Where it is served? On the plate. What is plate? Pure consciousness. <laughs> Anything happens to the plate? No. Any change? No. Who changes? I am plus the world. This is the problem. So our masters uses hundreds of similes and the metaphors. Examine simply a thought, I know you. I in the conscious mind at one place, you in the same conscious mind at a different location, knowing between the two at the third location. Who created all the three, the mind? Where is mind? All the three bodies. So with reference to this body, mind says, there you are. Reference again is the body. Physical body or attributes or any attributes, any character, part, property, product, shape, color, age. So I recognize you by your age, by your citizenship, by your color, by your gender, by your characters, by your attitude, by your behavior, but I am none of them, is the delusion. Where is the delusion? What I see is not true, but I claim it is true. Why it is happening? Because I cannot discern, I cannot do the viveka between I am and the real self. Clay pot does not exist, only clay exists that I cannot make out. Wave do not exist, only the water.
Ten buckets full of water, the sun is reflecting on them. I claim that here I am, here I am. I am this bucket and you are that bucket. Conscious mind is able to recognize. That recognition is based on? on I, am. I am. Based on I am. So do I need to do any practice? No, as a seeker, I need not to do any practice. I have to simply recognize. Cognition. So recognize means you go back to the cognition again. You have recognized that we are two. Recognize. Cognize again. So now I see, no, it's not a clay pot. It is only a clay. It's not a wave. It's only water. No, the sun is not... There is no ten suns, there is only one sun. For practical purposes, there is a husband and a wife, they are labels, but internally, there is no difference. There is no difference. See that. So again a point of the stress that distance and difference. There is no distance. Now but how do I know that they two are different? Through the knowledge, through the awareness, through the viveka, the word that we use, the viveka. So when I'm using viveka at the highest level, yes, viveka, the highest state of viveka is nothing but vairagya. I need not to fight that I have to control this, I have to detach myself. Highest level of discernment means knowing, separation, is Vairagya. No, I will not see the beautiful women. Or the women says, I do not see the beautiful, handsome man. We are going further into ignorance. But only it is a, it applies to a seeker. But when it applies to a non-seeker, then I enter into the path of distorted Tantra Yoga. Tantra Yoga is all about sex. You know, it has nothing to do with the sex. Then I enter into a delusion of doing hot Yoga, doing headstand pose, so the blood will flow inside my head and that will help me realize the real self. Come on. <laughs> then it's better to, uh, the scientists will find lot of, uh, they will inject the blood into the head and everyone will realize the real self. Or if I go back, you know, like polar bears, you know, I can hold the breath. A polar bears bury themselves into the snow for months together that we cannot achieve in any lifetime. So there is a misunderstanding. There is a lot, a lot of mis coming back to the same thing. Distance and difference. There is no distance between the mind and the consciousness, so the conscious mind. Mind, conscious mind. Mind is a matter. So one master gives an example, I think I, I discussed about it, red hot iron. So fire gives some properties to the iron ball and that iron ball becomes red and hot. An iron ball gives some properties to the fire. 
so it appears a red ball. But uh, did they mix up now? You leave the red hot iron ball outside for a few minutes, the iron goes to its natural state. Uh, physics makes us understand. The water goes uh, to its natural state, whether you make it ice or a vapor. They have to go to the natural state, the liquid, natural state. So they appear as if they are mixed up, but they are not mixed up. There the knowledge only will help me to discern, to separate them in the knowledge. Separate them in my head, separate them into the plate. All the dishes that we eat goes into the one belly. <laughs> But we eat differently. Oh, I like this and I like this. Okay, you, you like this. Until it, uh, it is swallowed, goes to the food pie. The food pie does not say, no, I feel very good. It becomes one. Enzymes and the acid, they digest all the food. Their main job is to digest. Whether you eat chicken or whether you eat vegetables. Distance is no more. Because they are superimposed. We lose awareness, we live in ignorance. We see what this I thought is saying is true. I am stressed, but they both are separate. Stress is different from I am. I mix the both and then I am stressed. Then I show the symptoms. The moment I say, I know you, you are separate from me. I am separate from you. So when I say I am stress, so stress is separate from I am. First separation, and then I am conscious mind. So that I am is a part of the conscious mind. But I know because of the consciousness, that consciousness is independent, separate from the world and the thought and the feeling and the experience of it. So we go on separating inside of our head through understanding, through knowledge, through awareness. The Shankaracharya begins with from the outermost to the innermost. Mano buddhir ahankara chittani naham. I am not the mind in the Mano buddhir, not the intellect, not the ego. Mano buddhir ahankara chittani naham. Mind stuff means the memory. Nacha shrutra jivvai, nacha ghrani nitri. I'm none of these five elements. I'm none of these five sense organs. I'm none. So who am I? Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. I am one pure consciousness. Nacha prana sangau navai pancha vayu. So the seeker understands this pancha vayu, five pranas. Nacha prana sangau navai pancha vayu. Nava sapta dhatu. Nava sapta dhatu. 
what is that sub dhatu carbohydrate protein minerals you know that is that sustains the body yes the human body is a gift but question is i'm none of them then who am i chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham now see that it goes further how beautifully you know Nami dvesha ragu, Nami dvesha ragu, first I am, then I am attached or detached, so I am none of them, neither attachment nor detachment. Now when you claim this is I am, and there in front of me is my honey, so I am related to the honey, I am already attached. No, but can I live without uh, attachment? Yes, I can live. I can live with unconditional love. No, no, no. But what is the condition? I don't have any condition uh, while attached to my honey. No. You have already said he, she, or he or she is your honey. So you are already, you selected. You are already attached. You don't claim that others are also your honey. The entire world is your honey. You say, no, only she is my honey. So who, who says this? I am. Who is this I am? It's a thought in the conscious mind. <laughs> so you are making a joke. Yes, you are making a fun of yourself. Why? Because you are in a delusion. The master says, because you live in ignorance, that's why you suffer. Why you suffer? Because your honey doesn't agree with you. <laughs> Let him or her doesn't agree. Thank you. You have your life and I have my own life. It's better that you did not agree with me. So I will endure and I will move from attachment to dispassion. So my problem is my opportunity. Elephant cannot see that problem as an opportunity. Dog cannot see problem as an opportunity. I have as gifted as a human body. I can see it. And still I don't evolve. To see, for the tiger to see there is a problem in the cage, It will take many millions of births unless the tiger becomes, appears as a human body, then only they can recognize. There is no possibility. You can train them. You can train them to eat vegetarian food and one day they will eat you if you make them pet. They cannot leave their instinctive nature. We can change. So it means with the human body. You know, I'm using the word conscious mind. All the three bodies. Name dvesh ragu Name lop mohu Neither the greed nor the delusion. I am none of them. Nami lobh mohu. Nami lobh mohu. Nami. Na nami dvesh ragu. Nami lobh mohu. Madhu neva me neva mat sarya bhava. Mad. What kind of a pride and ego that you have that you possess so much of wealth? Elon Musk has started the end of the social media. Wait for another two years. In the social media, we become an influencer. We become an important person. It's a virtual reality. Elon Musk has started the destruction of the social media. 
by his arrogance. That is what the pride is. That is what. The, and in even the Facebook, you know, the Mark Zuckerberg is very uh, disturbed. He started the metaverse. And uh, he has already laid off thousands of employees and is going to be an end of social media. We recognize that it is the end of the social media. No, it is, it is only the change. Change is the very nature of the world. We have to recognize this delusion. Nothing in the world stays <coughs> permanent. We have worked with so many, oh, this guy is a great influencer. He has 40 million followers. Where? On the network. What is network? Internet. Can you see the internet? No, I cannot see. I wanted to know to define the internet from my, from my son. And he said, why don't you understand? It's a network. It does not exist and it exists. I said, that is what the delusion is. Uh, 120 dot 192 dot 156 dot 8 my IP address we are living in a virtual world influencer this is social just just see that for in another two years everything will be destroyed but it will be replaced by another illusion yeah. separate this illusion from the consciousness that is all the <laughs> that is all that is all on the LinkedIn many people post me that I will I'm a great influencer I have 50,000 followers and I will show you how to become an influencer. So I'm not interested. I don't want to be an influencer. Conscious mind, I am. Let the consciousness remain as the greatest influencer which cannot be destroyed. So this master, come back, it master what it says. Name Dvesh Ragu Name Lobhamoho Greedy, greedy makes you an influencer. But at the end of the day, you the way you sleep, I also sleep. You have a disturbed sleep because your five in five followers have unfollowed you. <laughs> I sleep much better. <laughs> you see the after effect of this? So you recognize she or he is my honey and now it follows a different steps with the attributes, with the character. No, I, I loved you so much and you. I will teach you a lesson. Oh, once you have built a relationship based on the name and the form, you are bound to suffer. From where it comes, the recipe in the plate. What a great statement and a bold statement. Na dharmu, na charthu, na kamu, na moksha. I am none of these four goals in life. Three goals in life, to make an effort, to have a pleasure, to regulate these two by the dharma. Na dharmu, na charthu, na kamu, na moksha. I have to do nothing with any religion, cult, dogma, belief. I have nothing to do with what I possess and what is possessing me. I have nothing to do with any kind of the pleasure because they are superficial. 
So in the beginning, our masters educate no. You have to do the nitya and the nimitya karma. But after that, they say, why? Conscious mind creates a doer in you. Who is the doer? Is the body doer? Is your sense organs the doer? Is your breath the doer? Where is the doer? Where is the experiences? Everything is happening in the mind in the form of a delusion. You are not the doer. You are not the enjoyer. Really, you are the enjoyer of a good food, the pasta, that is lying in your plate? Who enjoys the tongue? Mind. Mind. Mind, Mind or at, at a lower level you say tongue. Oh. What if you na dharmu na charthu na kamu na moksha? It is at the highest level. One worth more, but we have to be very careful uh, that we leave, we live into that state. Na sukham na dukham na punyam na papam na sukham na dukham. What the master says, na punyam na. Where are the sins? Where are the virtues? We, in the Eastern wisdom, we start with, you know, don't do sin, don't commit any sin, live in the virtues, so that this conscious mind leaves a very deep sense of attachment. So you loosen that, you loosen the, you loosen that attachment. So we don't know, you don't be a sinner. Otherwise, it has no meaning. But a seeker never commits a sin. So that needs to be understood. So, But when we don't live into the, that level of understanding, then people say, where is this sin? You know, look at those people who are committing sin and they are wealthy. What do you mean? The wealth, the person who has a wealth, it, it is based on his pradabdha, the past karma. Not on what he is doing now. How you are relating this? His hard work, his focus in this life, his intense desire to earn the wealth. Do you have that intense desire? We don't realize this. So it causes the conflict. Otherwise, this master says, ah, na punyam na papam. When you don't have those merits and demerits, you, you are not attached. You are not the doer and the enjoyer. Who is the doer and enjoyer? Recipe in a plate. Not the plate. Conscious mind. I am. Then I am not. What I am not is the wealth. Then I build a relationship between the two is the third point. That is the intense desire. Then I become the enjoyer. Come on. Sukham na dukham. There is no sorrow, there is no happiness. Na punyam na papam na sukham na dukham. Oh, are you clear? Yes. Na mantra na tirtho na veda na yad. Then why to study Eastern wisdom? Why? Because you are free. <laughs> na mantra. Why mantra? Why go to pilgrimage? Why go to the teacher? My master used to say that once you reach to that state, the master goes on its path and the student goes on its path. Finished. The outer side, at the outer level, they appear that they are together. But when the seeker has become the master, Seeker follows the path. But to set an example of this tradition, we appear to be together. But it only happens at the level of the seeking. Once we are the highest level of a seeker, <coughs> so the master makes a very alert, makes us alert. 
Okay, now I have realized, crazy master, you just cheated me for so many years. So now I left you. So it means it is still the same conscious mind which is saying you have not realized. You have not realized. <coughs> you have not reached to that state. Because it is the conscious mind. So the master cautions. Vidya dadati viniyam. This knowledge is revealed in my mind. That resulted into humility and receptivity and a sense of kindness and a compassion. Buddha was full of compassion not because of his decision. The knowledge was revealed and kindness and the love was outflowing from his mind. He did nothing. No master did anything. It is the compassion out of the humility. Vidya dadati viniyam, that humility and the receptivity results into outflow, overflow of that love and the compassion. So when the seeker becomes the teacher, that teacher recognizes that I said to my master many things in the beginning and I realized that it was my ignorance and the master never left me. Master never left me out of love and compassion. So you carry forward the same tradition. So any person, for the teacher, any person who comes and says that you, I don't agree with you, he leaves you, he returns again, he abuses you, he returns again, same thing. Doesn't make any difference. Vidya dadati vinyam. <clears throat> so that knowledge, that existence continues the tradition. It has no role of any teacher. Role of a teacher means conscious mind. <laughs> so that teacher, teaching through the text, represents the real self sitting in you. <laughs> that is the beauty. That teacher teaching from the traditional wisdom is representing the real self. So that is why he also, he does not become crazy. He is ever ready. <coughs> Whether the seeker agrees or not. Seeker agrees or not, it has to do with ignorance. It has nothing to do with any preferences, bias, attachment, or detachment. See, think of this beautiful.